Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of Javier in the Air. So, Thanksgiving has come and gone and we all survived. The amount of food that we ate hopefully wasn't too much to bear and we are maybe able to eat on this Black Friday. Uh, I know I'm finally uh, thinking about food again. It's it's almost 6 o'clock in the evening um, and I was pretty much done. Even though I, I didn't eat as much as I thought I would, I still ate a lot. So um, it was good. I hope everybody had a good one. I had plenty of food. I had a friend's giving the neighbors, uh, you know, everybody knows James and Zaida, and then the Takashitas, which you, you all know as well. And then we had another friend that joined us also. Uh, we played some cards and we had some fun and we ate a lot of food. So um, before I move on to other subjects, um, I hope you had a good uh, dessert and all the trimmings and turkey and or ham. So for us, uh, most of the people that, that were here were not fans of turkey. And I'm not a huge fan of turkey. So I actually got a good boneless ham from HEB and heated that sucker up. Now, for those of you for next time, if you get a ham from HEB... Even though it's fully cooked, you still have to heat it up. And the problem with that can be is that, remember that ham, just like turkey, is dense. And so even though it was fully cooked, you have to heat it up almost uh, 13 minutes per pound. And you might actually, now the problem is, is that though you're going to heat it up, you might also have to worry about drying it out. So they tell you to fully wrap it in foil, aluminum foil which I did and then they tell you to go 13 to 15 minutes per pound and I was about six pound uh, ham that I had so the problem became what's that cutoff line between juicy 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 dry as a bone so the, the thing is um, I went I erred on the side of caution so I only went about 13 minutes per pound which wound up being about 65 minutes um, could have been 60, you know, could have been, uh, what, 78? Uh, yeah, 78, so that actually was a big difference, but, um, uh, I know, and, and I forgot that my gas stove, the oven, seems to, uh, take longer than other stoves that I've had before in the past, so, or other ovens that I've had in the past, so, I cook I heated it up not cook it I heated it up and went about an hour and it still wasn't enough so I had to heat it a little bit more and then I wound up having to nuke it and it was juicy so it was good but uh, I need to remember and you have you guys have to remember that you have to know your oven well because uh, airing on the side of caution it was still a little bit cool in the center but if I'd gone the other way it would have been dry as a bone before I even knew it. So know your oven and know how it cooks. So needless to say, I got the uh, the ham. Uh, had a delicious uh, prime rib roast that um, James Takashita was able to uh, to make earlier in the day and then bring it over. Fantastic. Um, just the way I like the uh, prime rib. Also had some fantastic bacon wrapped dates, mashed potatoes and carrots and brownies from james and zyda thank you thank you you two they're fantastic the food was great brownies were just perfect and if you don't know about brownies good rule of thumb don't cut them until you are going to serve them they stay moister that way let me say that again don't cut the brownies until you're about to eat them they will stay moister that way so then we also had a charcuterie board that uh, Julia Takashita brought. Um, and then I uh, provided the ham and I made that um, multi-berry corn cake that I made in previous episodes with the, with the brunch. Um, it was pretty much 50% cornmeal, 50% flour, and eggs and, you know, the normal thing. So it comes out kind of has a texture of cornbread but then it also has a, a slight consistency of a cake so it turns out really good really nice not too sweet fantastic so we had a good time played some cards um and so i'm gonna do um kind of a voiceover on 
just a handful of photos I didn't do too much so we'll do that and then I'm going to show you a little bit uh, I got some great results from my garden I'm really happy about that um, I'm actually getting some uh, a type of melon or two out of the garden so I will show you that then I will have a Zen moment for you uh, not sure which way I'm gonna go yet but I will have a Zen moment and then we're going to talk a little bit about beer. Um, Brother Rob and I went to a really great uh, new place. It's been open about three weeks now. I've been waiting uh, anxiously for it to finally open. And it did three weeks ago. Kind of a, I think it was a soft opening, but they may have had a hard opening as well. But the soft opening was about three weeks ago today. And we were able to get out there uh, this afternoon and enjoy the... Um, beer today it, it, it it's a beer and and coffee place and then uh we'll talk a little bit about some uh some of the answers and some of the questions that i had so sit back enjoy um enjoy this uh, javier in the air special episode that i'm trying to get out either today black friday or or early saturday and uh in lieu of it being that i've been off for this long so i might as well get it done and then we'll talk a little bit about the the last episodes of the season and what to be prepared for and what you can do to participate in the in the last couple of episodes and we'll go from there so here let's take a look at um my turkey day haha <laughs> i just realized that uh, I really don't have any photos of all the goodness that we ate. So here's uh, some photos of uh, us playing cards. So um, last Thanksgiving, actually two Thanksgivings ago, uh, we came across a game. I think it was my friend Keisha who earlier two years ago introduced us to this game called 12 Step Rummy. So uh, it's kind of like phase 10 if you've ever played that and each round you have to try to meet whatever the require minimum requirements are for example the first round is uh, two sets of three so two three of a kinds and then you make it to the second round and you go on and and it starts getting harder you start having runs and sets and all that now the thing is is that you're everybody's dealt ten cards right so because of that you have to have uh, for at least five people you have to have two decks when you have six people on up you start having three decks and then I think when you get to eight people you wind up having uh, four decks of cards so it gets pretty crazy um, so and then it also gets very difficult because people start your um, people going against you have are trying to get the same things as you so sometimes you can't fulfill the contract because you don't have the right amount of cards or, and you can't get them because the other person's holding them. So here's a shot of me um, with the uh, like three of a kind, and I'm trying to get that run of King Jack Nine Eight going, and all sorts of business. So the thing about this is that it's it's very friendly game. Uh, it gets people talking, and it takes a long, long time. So it's perfect for something like Thanksgiving, where you eat your weight. And then you sit around for a couple hours and let all that digest and then you eat again. So this was perfect for us for Thanksgiving. I was able to uh, eat what I wanted and everyone else did as well. And then we started playing the game and we took a break after a couple hours and ate some more. So uh, this is a really good game to play um, during uh, Thanksgiving. So if you want to know the rules, just uh, let me know. Okay, so there you have it. So once again, like I said in the voiceover, I apologize. I looked through my phone and I realized that I didn't take any photos of all the great food that we had. And I didn't take photos of, I think you see Julia's hand in one of the photos. So I, I really apologize for that. Uh, I should have taken photos before, which I'm learning even though we're in season two of Javier in the Air. I'm learning that I need to do that before any of my events because I have a tendency to just get into enjoying myself and so I forget to have uh, photos of people or videos of the event so okay but I did tell you about um, uh, I call it step 12 I mean it's, it's probably called something else uh, but the rules I mean I found them online and it's 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 maybe 12 step or step 12 I mean however you want to call it 
it is kind of like Phase 10, which I'm sure it is based. Phase 10 is based off of this game, uh, and it's a type of ramen. And like I said in the voiceover, that it really is a game that's fun for a lot of people, and it takes a long time. We never finish it. We never finish the game because you have someone has to get through all 12 steps. So I think we've done it before, but never at one sitting. And so we were here yesterday for about maybe close to three and a half hours three three and a half hours playing playing the game and we got one person james neighbor james to get to step seven so there were still five more steps and he didn't he didn't finish step seven uh and some of us were on six and i think one or two of us were on five so that tells you how difficult things can be so um uh, really, really difficult. So um, I was going to go over the, I was going to show the garden and then do the answers, but I think I'm going to talk about answers first because they had to do with Thanksgiving. So um, I asked a lot of people, got some different and unusual and unusual feedback. So I asked uh, some people what was their favorite, uh, de uh, favorite dessert or course for Thanksgiving. So I got the, you know, normal turkey and stuffy and gravy, um, you know, our ham and ham and uh, cranberry sauce and, um, you know, that sort of thing, mashed potatoes. And uh, I got I heard some green bean casserole and I heard um, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, a sweet potato casserole. And then I heard a mac and cheese casserole. And then I heard uh, scalloped potatoes and so that sort of thing so what's interesting is that all that i just mentioned some of those were on the answers to the other question which was some of the worst things that you've ever had uh as a course um some people said green bean casserole some people said mac and cheese not that they necessarily hated mac and cheese but they hated mac and cheese on thanksgiving oh um also heard uh Anything having to do with Jello that isn't just straight up Jello. So like people that put uh, not necessarily fruit, but like other weird stuff in the Jello. Like sometimes you see the and back in the day, you, like Jello with some kind of white cream on top, and then you had some people that used to put weird, odd things in there. Um, I think one of them was even. I think they, I want to say they said potted meat, but I I don't know if that meant spam or if there is something called potted meat. I never had it, so I don't know. Uh, if you know, let me know. Uh, so that was very interesting that what, what some people considered their favorites were uh, considered horrible by others. So, of course, the, the mainstay for everybody was the potatoes, either scalloped or sweet potatoes or uh, mashed potatoes or anything with potatoes. Everybody seemed to be okay with that. Um, the uh, There was some corn on the cob for good. Uh, it wasn't a lot for bad, but uh, they were really weird. So then I also asked about desserts, or actually they gave me desserts separately. So a lot of people, you know, have the standard pumpkin pie with or with or without whip, and then sometimes with or without ice cream. Um, pecan pie for a lot of people here in the South. Um, the, uh, I got one key lime pie, which I thought was interesting. Um, also the um, strawberry rhubarb pie. There was also the uh, cherry pie and um some like chocolate mousse pie uh a lot of a lot of pies there weren't any real cakes but a lot of pies and then some of the more unusual which i didn't consider unusual was uh lemon meringue so i like to thank my mom for that you saw her on a show a couple episodes back um my mom uh, would make a lemon meringue pie and normally she only made it for thanksgiving so it was it was a rarity but we made it or she made it and we ate it and so I considered it like a staple and then when I mentioned it the other day to some people they were like what I've never what I've never had lemon meringue pie for Thanksgiving so they found that to be unusual uh, I didn't think so um, so the meringue pies I guess there's some other meringue pie but we were always just ate lemon meringue pie so um, like I said no real cakes or anything like that um, the brownies was um, was also talked about you know a lot of people you know easier to make brownies than to uh make a pie sometimes depending on what you like and also depending on what you like to to bake so um so that was that 
and uh, nobody really hated any of the desserts so that turned out to be really good um, I do want to mention back in the day probably about 10 15 years ago maybe 10 years ago there was a company I don't know if they still do this because I didn't see it anywhere uh, there was a company called Jones Soda now Jones Soda had some very unusual sodas that they would bring out uh, periodically and seasonally and one of the things they used to do for Thanksgiving was their Thanksgiving soda pack and they had uh, gravy flavored soda turkey flavored soda uh, cranberry flavored soda which was the only one that I could actually stomach um, and then I think they even had uh, cornbread or something along that line all of them were ultra disgusting except for the cranberry because then that's just like cranberry flavored soda so that wasn't a big deal the other ones were not palatable and in fact you know just smelling them I'd be like Ugh, uh. so definitely if it's still out there let me know I don't want any don't send them my way because um, I don't drink soda anymore anyway but I definitely wouldn't drink any of that and I wouldn't push that on anybody so um, needless to say turkey day is done okay so Wednesday night before Thanksgiving I went out uh, actually I was playing moon at neighbor James inside his house uh, for those of you who don't know moon I'll probably have another video uh, next season and talk about gaming and we'll bring up moon again but I did have to go out and water the garden so I went outside and back and of course it was like 540 or it was like six o'clock so it was already pitch black and I went out there and I was um, I put I watered uh, my garden which has all the melons that I was telling you about so uh, to bring back up around to what uh, what I've been doing is that I have my grapevine out there but I also have a garden that you've seen on other previous episodes of Javier in the air and I have a ton of melons that I've been trying to grow some of them are, are one of them is actually regular and then the rest of them are not so I have your standard watermelon I have a watermelon that has a is supposed to have orange fruit inside instead of red one of them that's supposed to have yellow on the inside instead of red one of them that's supposed to have purple on the inside instead of red and then I have something called tiger melons uh, and sometimes they're called tiger melons it just depends on on uh, who you ask and they're about uh, baseball shaped uh, are baseball shaped and baseball sized and they're orange on the outside and kind of orange in the middle and they're supposed to have a creamy um, texture and taste to them um, as a, more along the lines of like a honeydew as opposed to watermelon uh, so then finally uh, our well finally as far as the melons go I had something called kuka melons so kuka melons are these tiny little they're also called Mexican gherkins and they're tiny little melons like this they grow to about the size of an olive when they're mature and I'm not sure exactly what they taste like but I have two hopefully they don't get eaten by anything uh, while I'm still trying to put up the cage around the garden I'm hoping to pull them in the next day or two and you can just eat them straight you don't have to you don't peel it certainly because they're only that big um, you can add them in the cocktails which I thought was interesting I think you use it more like a olive or a cocktail onion rather than anything else like you wouldn't squeeze it and get the juice out of it you just put it in whole um, but I'm really curious as to what they taste like so I'm gonna give it I'm gonna I think I gave it a couple days I'm gonna give it two days um, now and I actually given it two days since Wednesday so I'm gonna check it tomorrow hopefully it'll be they'll be big enough that I can pull them and then I'll have it on the following uh, podcast of what they taste like and what they look like and it's harvest so I'm really excited about it so uh, let's take a look at the uh, video of those so I'm out here pre Thanksgiving and if you can see I got two little of the I think those are the kooka melons so I'm gonna let those go for a while hopefully I don't get any more insects or anything but that's looking good there's my loofah that's looking good so I'm really happy about that I'm actually getting something so that's very cool okay so that was the garden and I forgot to mention that 
Uh, I have a loofah plant growing, which those of you who haven't may not have watched other episodes, the loofah is not something that you is not a, a animal that you would find like on the sea floor or something like that. It actually is a plant. It grows um, in regular climate. Grows in this climate. It looks kind of like a cucumber when it grows and then as it starts maturing it starts getting dried out and when it's absolutely mature is when it's totally dry and there's seeds in there and you can kind of uh, manipulate the inside so that you can get the seeds out and then you could use those seeds for the next planting season so I'm hoping that I can at least get one or two because I'd like to see how they look they uh, supposedly when they're young you can eat them just like if you would eat a cucumber and then when they're older they're the loofahs that people know about so they're not a sea animal the loofah is actually from a plant so there's your little uh fun fact for for the podcast so all right so you saw the garden and you saw uh all that so now we're gonna uh get into the beer portion of it so i've been waiting for this um place a business to open right close to me very dangerous very close to me that's why it's really dangerous place called slackers they have uh coffee and beer they are a local business um maybe eventually one of these days i can uh interview the owners and went by this was their third week uh i think this was a yeah start of week three or the end of week three uh, they had a soft opening a couple of Fridays ago, and or I call it a soft opening. I didn't see anything anywhere about it except on Facebook. So if you uh, put in Slackers, you can get um, their Facebook page, and you can like it and follow it and catch updates from them. They are currently working on getting everything up and running. They do have their coffee, and they don't have their beer yet on the menu but they do have other beers on the menu so uh, brother Rob and I decided to go and check it out and just see what it was all about now uh, right now they have a very limited uh, opening Uh, they're open from noon to about 10 p.m. at least I think maybe midnight on Fridays and Saturdays I'm not sure but you can check that by uh, going on their Facebook page and, and checking the hours or just doing a search on Google and getting their uh, website Um, and so they had a they had a good selection so I'm gonna show you uh, a couple of pictures that I took of of slackers and um, then a short video and then we'll come back and I'll wrap up uh, for the podcast so if uh, slackers if you guys are watching this uh, hopefully you will um, reach out to me and we can have a formal interview I know there's some artwork that you have on display there as well Uh, I'd like to talk to you guys sit down try some of your coffee and then try your beer as well so maybe we can get that uh, figure out a time that you guys are available and we can do that Um, so I think that'd be great Uh, give you a little bit more exposure because you know I have so many fans that uh, you know every little bit of uh, uh, social media will help so Let's take a look at the pictures and let's take a listen to the video and then I'll be back. Okay, so here we are outside of Slackers. This is in the same uh, strip mall, for those of you who may know, uh, with uh, Charm uh, Chicken and Karaoke. Uh, I know I laugh every time I say it. Also, um, with Interstellar Barbecue. So this is actually close, uh, very close, right next door to, or right connected to the uh, Indian restaurant on the far end of the strip mall if you're coming from Anderson Mill. So uh, we took a step inside to check it out and here's uh, the menu on the left side you see the menu of the beers and then on the right side in the shorter shorter board you see uh, the coffee that is available. So uh, there was a lot of uh, local uh, craft breweries that were on the board uh, nothing yet from Slackers, but they had all your favorites, you know, uh, 512 and Mosaic and High Sign and all that type of thing. 
Um, now what we didn't try was this side, which was the uh, coffee side. So hopefully uh, it looks a little blurry. So hopefully it, it, you might be, it might look better uh, in the podcast. But they had some pour overs and they had some, you know, your, your standard uh, drinks, so, uh, coffee drinks so far. Um, I didn't see anything unusual, but I wasn't really taking a look that much. But um, I certainly will try uh, some of their coffee when... I return on the next trip, so uh, hopefully uh, I get to do that soon. So here at Slackers, um, finishing up actually, we had a couple of beers and, and it might have been that the it was sitting in the lines or anything, but the second and third round had turned out to be much, much better. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have any of their beer going yet uh, because it's early. I think this is their third week that they've been around. So, but I wanted to come out here with the bro and get some drinking in, um, especially since I'm off today. Um, so we, we are doing that. They have a good selection, pretty decent selection here, you know, from the different places around town. Uh, you know, 512 and Mosaic and High Sign and Hedgehog and Live Oak and Austin East Ciders um, as well. So they have some good beers here. Uh, so if you live close to uh, the Cedar Park area or in the Cedar Park area, uh, certainly come out and uh, tell them, hey, tell them that Javier sent you. Even though they don't know me, tell them Javier sent you anyway. Uh, and it turns out to be pretty good. Maybe I'll get some of the, uh, the owner or something to try it. Uh, see if I can get it. Okay, so there you have it. There's uh, Slacker's Coffee and, and Beer. Uh, I think it's called Slacker's Coffee and Brew, but um, I'll double check with them when I hear from them. And uh, you guys at Slacker's did a great job. So there's a, a young man that was pouring uh, beer for us uh, today, and we saw him before um, when we were at another brewery. And so it was great to see him. He remembered us, of course, because, I mean, who would forget myself and Rob? And uh, so then we, we recognized him, and uh, it was fun to say hello. Okay, so... If uh, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so, maybe I'll get to hear from uh, the team at Slackers and I'll be able to interview them for my show. Uh, so there's only a few weeks left in the year. I'm hoping that to get, you know, three or four more episodes in may, may only be three and not one per week, uh, depending on what's going on in my life uh, for the holidays. But they're going to be jam packed full of adventure. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna talk to uh, people about uh, their uh, perspective on the holidays. What's great for them? What's bad for them? Some of people's favorite Christmas movies. Some of people that are uh, movies that people are tired of. Um, some of the music that people may be tired of, and some of the people uh, music that people may still love to hear over that they only usually listen to over the holidays. Um, so speaking of, there are we're already starting the Christmas holiday uh, stuff prior to Halloween. So I'm really disappointed in society that we're doing that nowadays. Uh, pretty soon they'll just start in February and they'll go through December, and then we have the month of January off where they leave us alone about Christmas uh, or Xmas, depending on you. I actually prefer Xmas. Uh, it ticks some people off, and so you know why. That's part of the reason why. I like to say Xmas. So, anyway, uh, we'll we'll have a garden update. Like I said, hopefully those those little kooka melons will turn out all right. Um, I'll give you an update on what I'm going to be doing uh, in season three. Yes, this will be season three coming up in January. I've already been doing this for uh, two years now, and uh, anything and everything that we can do. Please continue sending me your feedback and your comments and suggestions. Uh, especially, I know uh, I've got some feedback about the camera and then it looks a little uh, pixelated because it's an older camera on, on my laptop. I need to get a multi-USB port because I ran out of ports with all that I'm doing with the, with the lighting and the camera. I mean lighting and the microphone and then some other things I have connected to my three USB ports so I actually need to make room for more so I need to get a plug-in for that so that I can get my camera uh, my better camera back up and running on here for the show uh, also uh, I have a clean shirt on uh, thanks for the feedback on that I try to minimize the uh and um that I normally do 
So trying a bunch of different things. Hopefully it works out for everyone. If you're interested in being on my show, please uh, reach out to me either via Instagram or Facebook or uh, on my YouTube channel, Javier in the Air. And uh, or if you see me at uh, somewhere, you'd be like, hey, that's Javier from Javier in the Air. And you want to tell me about what you do and you want to be on the show. Just let me know. Um, I can certainly get to your place of business or we can have a Zoom meeting or a Google chat. However you want to reach us, uh, reach out to me. We can set up something. So uh, once again, just about everything's on the table. No religion or politics. Um, And so. Uh, I just realized that I didn't get a Zen moment in, so I want to apologize for that. No Zen this time. Uh, I did have something, but I didn't like the way it came out, so I got rid of it. And I do have one, but I I really want to do that for next week. So I will not have it on this show, besides we're right about the 30-minute mark anyway. So that works out good. So I apologize for those who are looking forward to the Zen moment. So I want to thank everyone for watching the show. Thanks again to Slackers for being there so that we can get some tasty beers today. And I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. So I will bid you adieu and I will see everybody uh, next week. Take care now.